Johnson uh, on the CISO with uh, Premise Health. One of the things that I think is really important is to recognize the ability to actually embrace risk, right? Because when you're having risk conversations with stakeholders in your organization, they're actually really highly attuned to risk conversations. Financial risk, execution risk, perception risk. There's, there's lots of different kinds of risk, right? And so, so the world that we live in is, is, is just one more of those. And having to be on the journey to, to educate that group and illuminate risk, not necessarily always eliminate it, right? To be able to do that effectively means you have to be able to speak in, in the language that that audience is going to understand. One of the things that's been interesting, I think, uh, look, when we collaborate a little together is uh, all the alignment, uh, I think you'll hear from the panelists and the themes today, just about really getting aligned to what the business is trying to achieve, where it's trying to head so that you can help them determine uh, the levels of risk that are, that are acceptable. When I first took on the security program, I looked around and I felt like many departments and parts of the program were missing and you know we had to we had to build those and when i walked into the security program every day when i asked the leaders do you feel like we work in an awesome security program and the answer was decidedly no the thing that was missing for us is each area where we had a set of controls within the security program was doing phenomenally well but when you added it all together and called it a single security program it lacked significant cohesiveness and we figured how do we create a culture a common culture that spans the entire security program and we realized the first thing that a culture needs is a common language and that's really the reason that we started to look at FAIR for that to be the common language that would connect just the security department together so we would operate as a cohesive whole versus a group of federated departments that just happen to all report to, uh, to the same, same person. Since then, we've taken that, partnered with the enterprise risk management team to say, how do we make uh, better, more informed decisions? From your perspective, this notion of a risk management program that actually works, what does that mean in your mind? One of the things that has been very empowering for us is, is getting close to trying to answer the question of what is it what is, what, what is it we're trying to do as a business? Where are we trying to go? And then how does that drive our decisions around the finite resources that we're going to apply to try to protect said thing? Um, in a lot of contexts, we can, equipped with the right uh, metrics, equipped with the right risk reporting, we're able to basically go out and a lot of times solve very large, high-risk problems without any spend. Right? They could be process problems, they could be um, issues around inner departments not communicating or simply being able to say, hey, you know, the, there's a massive amount of execution risk that a lot of times we're presenting as a security function. Right? So for us, the effective program is really about ensuring that we have the appropriate stakeholders involved. Um, and, and in that case, when we're all speaking a similar language and we're, we're all kind of on that same page, the security initiatives and the funding um, for the program become self-sustaining, really. Uh, in our world, they, they, they happen because the stakeholders in the, in, the, in the organization, the stakeholders in the room, understand what we're trying to solve, how we're trying to solve it, and, and why that is the appropriate um, provision of those resources to do it. So it really is about ensuring that there is a narrative um, like you were saying, not just within the security uh, and, and risk functions themselves, but really within the entire organization so that they are perceiving the risk management function as actually you know, a driver of efficiency for the business. To me, the successful risk management program looks like one that makes those decisions with speed and makes those decisions with confidence. And that doesn't mean we're gonna get those right every single time, but based on the data that we have at the time, with reasonable analysis, we feel confident that the answers we're making are the right ones, and the net result of that is a very selfish one, which is I get to sleep a little bit better at night. Any of you had to defend any of the uh, analyses that you presented to the executives? All the time, they, they don't necessarily need to know everything that makes up that number, they need to understand the rationale behind it. It may not so much be defending it, but certainly explaining what it is um, and getting, when we start talking about the board level, to a more strategic discussion around resourcing uh, uh, that is sort of wrapped around the initiatives of what the business is trying to accomplish. I do walk them through exactly the rigor behind it, the logic behind how we came up with the 25, 
why number one is number one, why number 16 is 16. So while they may not necessarily understand each and every technology, they absolutely understand the process, they understand the criteria, they understand the risk reduction value of every single one of those, um, of those controls. And that piece is really important. And one of the conversations I had with uh, that business unit CFO, I said, you know, before you approve this, I want you to feel very confident that this is right. You know, some of those things is how you really build that credibility and, and, and um, establish that, that confidence. And you do have to be very, very willing to say, you can go through and look at all of the analysis. I'd be happy to show you exactly what's in my, what's in my black box.